What's up everybody? How y'all doing man? First and foremost, thanks for clicking that play button. I appreciate you watching the video. Take a second and hit the subscribe button. And at the end of the video, if you like the video, if you have a comment on the video, leave me a thumbs up. Um, I'm still under the weather a little bit. I've been, uh, I've been s stuck with the flu for about a week now. So I still have my sound a little congested. So on today's video, as you see in the link of the description of the video, it says home invasion. So today, during the morning, I got a funny story to tell. It's not funny, but I got a story to tell you. So basically, what happened was that I came, I, you know, at 4.30ish in the morning, I got up, I uh, took a shower, put on my uniform from work, came downstairs, hit the light switch to the, my kitchen, turned on my coffee pot and there was a man asleep on my couch right so you could imagine my face like I was like what like who the fuck is that you know what I'm saying so you know I share my crib with a roommate so before I freak out or you know think the worst I think well maybe he's one of the homies and he he's he knows my roommate my, my roommate let him crash on the couch so I go upstairs, knock on my roommate's door. No, I don't even knock. I just go right into his room. I shake him, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, there's a dude sleeping on the couch, man. You know that dude? Because, you know, my roommate's real cool. And if somebody's going to sleep over, he'll let me know. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I'm going to have company. The dude's going to come and, and sleep over. You know, I just don't let anybody in the crib or whatnot. So my roommate didn't tell me. So I was like a little sketchy. I woke him up. I'm like, yo. There's a dude on the couch, you know him? My roommate wakes up, he's like, no, what? I said, there's a dude on the couch. Yo, if you, if you would've seen, if you would've seen my roommate's face, bro, he got up, we went down there, and he saw what I saw. A dude passed out, no shirt, no, with his shoes off, his shirt on my table, passed out on my couch, man. So, we go back up the stairs, and my roommate's like, yo, what do we do? And I'm like, well, if we wake him, and I mean, I told my roommate, call the cops. You know what I'm saying? So if anything does happen, the cops are on the way. And that's our first, you know, that's our first thing to do. Um, so, you know, my room, I give my roommate the phone and he calls the cops. And I'm just in the stairwell, just staring at the dude, you know, making sure he doesn't get up or try to do anything like, you know, go to the kitchen, grab a knife. I don't know. I had my laptop around. He didn't grab my laptop, make a run for it. Because if he would have grabbed one of some of my shit, made a run for it, I would have came, dropped that people's elbow on him, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, that was, that's not what I wanted to happen, you know, I just... I didn't want him to get away with none of the stuff that work, I worked my ass off to get because, you know, despite what people think or know about me, everything I have, I've worked hard to get it. You know what I'm saying? From really making a little bit of money a year to saving my money, flipping my money, and, you know, buying the, the stuff that I buy. It's all work. It's no, no easy money in my life. You know what I'm saying? Everything comes hard. So I wasn't just gonna let some dude run away with my stuff. So I just kept an eye on him. So my, my roommate's like, yo, police said, let's wait upstairs until they come. They're on their way. I said they were about seven minutes away. So I just told my, my roommate, like, nah, I ain't going nowhere, fam. So I just stayed there. He stayed sound asleep. And the cops come into the house, right? They come in SWAT team style, holding each other's shoulders. You know what I'm saying? Well, they have the guns with the lights on, and they're you know they're scanning the they're scanning the the house, you know. So they see me in the stairs, you know. I have my uniform on from work, you know. I'm like, oh, I live here, you know. But they didn't like point the gun at me or anything. They were just like, yo, where is he? They went in, they saw him sleeping there. They yanked him up, and he was he was still asleep. They were yanking him, yanking. He was still asleep, and they asked him like, yo, what are you what, what are you doing? And the dude was like, oh, he was confused. The story. He's like, I work here. I work here. Like, you work here? What, are you cleaning the house? What do you do here? You know, he's like, oh, I work at the mall. You know, he's disoriented. Where am I? Where am I? 
you know, they start running in his pockets, you know, he starts getting loud with the cops, cops, cops tell him to chill out, you know, which, you know, in a way you kind of have to understand because the dude is dead asleep, you know, God knows what he drank, what he smoked, he was dead asleep, you know, so when the cops basically woke him up, pushing him, I mean, if somebody yanked you out of your sleep and started matching you around, you'd be like, hey, hey, what the fuck, you know? So basically, they pull him out, they pull him out into the, into, you know, outside the house or whatever, and the cops come back, and, you know, they tell us a story. So, basically, uh, he lives in the neighborhood, uh, he was out drinking heavily, and they dropped him off in front of our apartment, or our houses, and he walked into my house thinking it was his house and passed out on the couch now how could that happen you ask right well all my building all the front entrances look the same so if you don't really all the houses look the same so if you're inebriated or you're drunk you don't really know what house you're going into you know what I'm saying if you're drunk and you're crazy it's easy to walk into somebody else's house right so um you know, they told us that that he was he has family in the neighborhood, and they dropped him off, and he thought he was going to his house. He went to our house, and that was it. You know, they asked us, they asked me if I wanted to press charges, and no, I, I didn't want to press charges. You know what I'm saying? Because really, the man didn't he didn't mean us no harm. You know what I'm saying? While I I understand that you know you could be upset for somebody just walking in your house and sleeping on your damn couch. Of course, that's a violation of your privacy and everything, but, you know, he didn't come, he would, it was just a, it was an occurrence, it was like a freak occurrence, it was an accident, you know, he could have, he could have cleaned us out, or cleaned me out, you know what I'm saying, if he wanted to, he could have gone upstairs and killed everybody if he wanted to, you know what I mean, so, basically, how he got into my house is actually my fault, right, because since I've been sick, you know what I'm saying? I was taking medications for my sickness, and one was like a like this this fucking cough syrup that just fucks you up. Um, Claritin, um, you know, ibuprofen, and shit like that for my cough and and that stuff. So I took that early because I had to be at work early in the morning. So I passed out on my couch early. I'm talking like seven o'clock at night. I took my, my medicine, I was watching Netflix, I passed out on the couch. I woke up around 10 o'clock at night and went up into my room, not locking my front door, right? Because, you know, that yesterday I was kind of like throwing a lot of trash out back and forth to the bin, so I had the door open, and um, yeah, I just, I just didn't lock the door. I just went upstairs and I passed out. So... You know, that is how he just accidentally walked into my house and <laughs> and passed out on my couch. So, I know what a lot of people are thinking, right? Oh, if somebody came into my house, I would do this. And if somebody would come out of my house, then I would do that. Um, I have I have extensive training in self-defense. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've taken tactical courses. I have watched hours and hours of videos on self-defense, use of force, um, conceal carry, everyday carry, you know, I'm just not really into sneakers, you know what I'm saying, I'm into a lot of things, so, you know, like guns, ammo, knives, you know, I'm into all that stuff, and also I've done like freelance bodyguard work, I've done security work, done bouncer work, so I have like a tactical bat. Or more, I'm not like no GI Joe or no freaking Navy SEAL or nothing like that. But I know a little more. I've done a little more research. I've, I know a little more, you know, uh, of that kind of stuff than the average person. You know what I mean? A little background on me. Also, you know, I, I grew up in a wild neighborhood in New York, and now I live in Miami in a wild neighborhood. You know, I've been a bouncer most of my life in Miami in my adult life. So, you know, I've been in a lot of violent situations. Also, always on defense, you know, I'm not a bully or uh, I'm not somebody that likes to get violent with anybody. So, you know, I have I have played that scenario out in my mind on how I would do, what I would do if anybody ever broke into my house. That would be that person's worst day ever. Uh, but the way that it, it happened, 
the way everything went down, you know, the guy wasn't really no threat, and at no time did I ever really feel threatened by him. You know what I'm saying? And you know, telling the story to people that were to like, oh, bro, you should have shot it more. Oh, bro, I would have beat his ass and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, dude, you you, you would have beat an, a sleeping man's ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, you would have pulled your gun out. You would have pulled your AR-15 out on a fucking man who's passed out on your on, on the couch and poses no threat to you. Yeah, of course, if he's in your house already, he is a threat to you and your family. Yeah. I kind of understand that logic, you know, but he, at no point did I feel threatened, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm, the man had no shirt, no shoes, you know, as I, I'm checking him out, I'm looking at his waistband, I'm looking at his hands, you know, so I never really felt like I had to do anything to the guy other than have the police get there, you know, and now he would have got up and the police haven't got here and he would have got aggressive, he would have got physical. Then, you know, use of force would have escalated to something different, God forbid, you know what I mean? But it just goes to show you, like, you know, you got to be on top of things. Like, this was a wake-up call for me, you know what I mean? Like, you cannot not leave your door locked. Like, all your windows have to be locked. Your alarm has to be on. You know, if you have firearms in the house, they can't be in another room. They got to be next to you at all times, you know what I mean? Because... You just might come down one day and make a cup of coffee and there might be a dude in your living room. You know what I mean? And that's facts. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy the way it turned out. You know, nobody got hurt. Um, nobody even got arrested. You know, when the cops asked me if I wanted to press charges, you know, I don't want to put nobody in a box that doesn't deserve it. You know what I mean? Yeah, he came to my house, but he didn't come here to hurt nobody. He didn't come here to steal. He thought it was his house. You know, plus also, that man has his man. He has a life, you know what I'm saying? And, and he probably has kids, and he might have a wife at home. Or, You know, I don't want to be responsible for that man's death because he came into my house, you know what I mean? I want to have beef in my neighborhood for the rest of my life because I did something that it wasn't justified, you know what I'm saying? So... That's what I'm saying. That's my story about how dude came into my house and passed out on my couch, man. Uh, shout out to the Miami-Dade PD who came in and handled that. Um, shout out to my roommate for keeping a cool head. And shout out to God, man. Shout out to God for protecting me and protecting that man. You know what I'm saying? Cooler heads prevailed. And everybody is safe. Everybody's good. Hopefully that man's at home with his family. And, you know, I'm Gucci, man. That's it. That's all I got to say about that, man. Thanks for watching the video. If you like the content, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel, man. Peace. God bless.